Okay, you're probably looking at this video and thinking, Mike, that's one funny looking radio. Well, that's because it's not a radio. It's a antique tube type. It's kind of obvious by the eye tube here, but it's a capacitor analyzer. It's a Simcor make, and it was made in, I'm not sure how that's pronounced, so if you live there I'm, and I boggle the name, I'm sorry, but it's either Hato or Hato Rey Puerto Rico. And see the same thing listed on the meter face itself. And this is a capacitor analyzer, and it is also a uh, mega ohm meter. Um, with this button depressed here, we'll just get not get that knocked out of the way. Describe it really quick. With this button depressed, it's a mega ohm insulation resistance meter, and it measures from 100 mega ohms up to 20k or 20,000 mega ohms. So, actually, let me do the math in my head real quick. That would be, what, 20 billion. So, it, you know, it will measure up to 20 billion ohms. You know, 20,000 meg, or 20,000 million, would be 20 billion. Yeah, 20 billion ohms. So, in any case, that's nice, because a lot of your digital meters, like this one, you know, this only goes up to 20 meg. So, if you ever need to measure really high resistance, this can, this can be used for that main thing it's used for is though, and it's what we're going to demonstrate today, is capacitors. Uh, now for starters I've done two modifications to this. The first one was to add this indicator light. I like all my equipment, you know, most all the solid state stuff here, all your modern equipment. Um, it's got lots of shiny lights, digital displays, so you know I can easily just glance across the bench and see everything that's turned on. Like right now I can look up here and see this radio is turned on. It's got a digital display. Um, even most of my old tube equipment has factory installed, you know, the old HP equipment all had, you know, indicator lights. This didn't, so I added a neon light to it. The other thing I did was, because I normally only use this for leakage testing, I'm not usually using this to test capacitor values, so I don't need this eye tube, so I added a, to a toggle switch to be able to turn that off, because that's a function that I rarely ever use. So no, no need to burn up the eye, you know, shorten the life of the eye tube if I don't need to use it. So uh, what you can do with this thing, and it's very handy, it is a high voltage power supply basically. Now, unlike your modern uh, ESR, which stands for Equivalent Series Resistance Testers, um, as I have several of those and they work fine too, but there's one, if there's one downfall to those testers, they're not testing capacitors under real-world operating conditions. And in the case of this capacitor right here, this is a four-section. Okay, it's got, you see there's four terminals in the middle. All these outside terminals are the ground. They're attached to the can. But all these inside terminals, they're, okay, this is a four-section, 10 microfarad at 500 volt DC capacitor. So... Those little testers are very low voltage. They can't test this thing at 500 volts, you know, high voltage. That's the big advantage of this. You can you can apply 500 volts to it and measure, and that's what you're measuring leakage. You're measuring leakage current. So we have two scales. This is a multi-function and multi-graduated scale. So like I described, the top is for resistance, but this bottom scale goes from zero to 60. The next one up goes from 0 to 600. So that's either 0 to 60 milliamps or 0 to 600 milliamps. Or when you push this button in here, it says press for reading volts. When you press that in, the scale reads from 0 to 60 volts or from 0 to 60 or 0 to 600 volts. Now to change the scale from 0 to 60 or 0 to 600 milliamps, or not, no, excuse me. It's actually 0 to 6 or 0 to 60 milliamps. I said 600 milliamps. My God, this thing can't supply 600 milliamps of current. <laughs> that, that HP power supply there can only supply 100. <laughs> Let me reiterate that again. This is not a 600 milliamp power supply inside this thing. It's just up, up to 60. So in any case, this is a spring-loaded switch. So in as it sets right now, you know, if I apply turn the power supply voltage on, it's now applying, this scale is now reading as it sits, 
from zero to 60 milliamps, and if I push the button to the right, then it's zero to six milliamps, okay? So, and then the iTube is used in conjunction with this dial and this dial for actually testing capacitor values, to test it for value. But, like I say, the big advantage of this supply, you know, over the, the solid state ones is, yeah, you know, when they say ESR meter, that's exactly what they mean. There's basically as capacitors age and they start to go bad, you've basically added a resistor inside the capacitor. And you know, in small capacitors like they're used in a lot of your electronics today, you, you won't hear stuff exploding or popping inside your equipment. But in old tube type equipment, you know, when one of these things goes, boy, it can go off with one hell of a bang, and it makes one hell of a cloud of steam, you know, the vaporized oil from inside this thing, and you get, you know, the ends of these blow out, you know, it's got this big thick rubber piece that goes in about this far into the can. If that blows out, all the oil vaporizes, because these are sealed, so you have to remember, if, if you have, if the ESR meter is testing equivalent series resistance, if it's measuring, like I say, it's Basically, that's what happens. As a capacitor ages and starts to short out inside, it's basically turned it from a capacitor into a resistor. And what do resistors do? And this one's a good example. You see how bubbly and hot this thing's been over the decades? They, they get hot, okay? Resistors do one thing. They turn electrical energy into thermal energy and dissipate it. So if you've now, you know, as the capacitor ages, if it starts to basically have a resistor inside, this capacitor is going to get hot. And at some point in its life, it will get so hot that it finally overcomes the mechanical strength of this can being able to, you know, hold that pressure in. It eventually explodes. In this style, the end would blow out. In this style, a can, usually there's a hole. This one has a little hole over there. This one has a hole, I think, right in the middle. Yeah, there's a, a vent hole in the middle. You know, modern uh, radial capacitors usually have an X in the top, you know, in the you know, small voltage capacitor. Sometimes you'll see an X crimped into the top of them or just a line or maybe even on the side, but that's meant for the capacitor to be able to split open and vent. So it, you know, gives it somewhat of a weak point. But that's what's going to happen. So... Let's go ahead and uh, use this, but that's the, like I say, the big advantage is you can apply high voltage to this. The ESR meter may read okay, but maybe there's something in, wrong inside of this. There might be some, you know, the paper's deteriorated, but the plates aren't actually touching inside. Well, with that ESR meter, it probably will read fine. It's not going to measure equivalent series resistance as long as the, the two different plates inside the cap aren't touching. Well, at 500 volts, it might be able to arc. So it doesn't. The resistance measurement doesn't mean anything if you basically have a spark plug inside. You know, that's a. You know, it can start to arc inside. So that's something you can test on this. Is you can actually put it under real world voltage. So the first thing we're going to do is um, we're going to test. I'll demonstrate the measuring uh, capability of this. So we'll get a positive. Any, it doesn't really matter which one you hook up. Like I say, it's a four section, so we'll just randomly pick a, a section of the capacitor. Um, now, when you do this test, you'll see you've got different scales here you can use. And this is a, we know from just looking at it, we know what it is. It's a 10 microfarad section. Now, that's another thing you'll notice. This is UF. Now, the, this capacitor is from the set from the mid-70s. So it's old, but it's not as old as this. Back when this was made, they didn't use the UF uh, designation for microfarad. They used MF back in those days. So it's the same thing, MF or UF microfarad. Now, actually, on old equipment or old capacitors, you might even see them listed as MMF, which is micro-microfarad. But that's just something to keep in mind. The MF and UF, exactly the same thing. So... What we're going to do is make sure our power fact, percentage power factor is turned down the whole way. We'll select a scale here that's, you know, some has this capacitor in its range. So somewhere, this, this capacitor is somewhere between 0.1 and 50 microfarads. So we'll push that button in. Now, with the 0.1 to 50 microfarad scale selected, I'll spin the dial the whole way to the right here. Okay, so that's saying, you know, C4. So this is, C4 is the second, this 
scale, not this top one, but the next one down. So you can see 0.1 right there, and I turn the whole way to the right. You can see there's the 50, so that's the scale we're going to be looking at. And what we're looking for is, is the eye tube's going to open. When we get close, get close to the actual capacitor's value, you'll see that eye start to open. Ooh, and it didn't open hardly at all. Very little less. That means it's got a fairly high percentage power factor. Actually, fairly horrible. So, actually, we'll turn the dial up here. You can see, I don't know how well the eye tube's showing on the camera. At least what I'm seeing through the screen here, it does. you can't even see it. But that's because that's a good eye tube. Hence, one of the reasons I put that in there. I don't want it to burn up. Yeah, I don't know how well that eye tube showing. I don't know if you can even see. There is a... I don't know if you can see that opening and closing. Like I say, through the display on the camera here, I can't really barely make that out, that opening and closing. But take my word for it, it is. So right there, about the maximum opening. And adjust this again for maximum opening. And then I can take my measurement. So we're at, here's 10, 11, 12, 13, say 13 and, uh, or no, actually, that's, oh, no, that's double, so that's 10, 11, uh, about almost 12 microfarad. But the main, the big problem here is, is the power factor. It's got a power factor, and I've got that scale on 0 to 20, so that's the outside scale on here. So that's 5, 6, 7, 8. That's about an 8% power factor. Yeah, not so good, <laughs> especially for a spray capacitor. They're actually very good caps, but it's old. It, you know, it's been in use for decades. So, but the next thing we want to do um, is now check it for leakage, and that's what I mainly use these for. And that's basically just using it as a power supply. It's basically the same as that supply over there. That one just has two meters: a voltmeter, a separate voltmeter, and current meter. Where this one is a combination unit. So we're going to make sure, our, before we turn it on, we want to make sure that the voltage adjustment is turned down the whole way. And we'll select, because this has a maximum operating voltage of 500 volts DC, we're going to select the 60 to 600 volt scale. And, and we can turn up the volt. Now you'll see as I turn this up, see the needle move there? Now that's not a voltage measurement. Remember, that's a current meter. When I push this button in, now it's reading voltage, but you can see it will slowly start to climb. It'll spring up, you know, wherever it is, but turn it up some more. And every time I turn the voltage up with the voltage adjustment, you'll see the current rise up a little bit. So we're at about 380. Let's see if I can do this with one hand. And we're at 410. 20, 430, 440. I'm going to hold it there. Yeah, actually, I want to back that down just a hair. It's going to eventually end up over 450. Oh, actually, that's right. This is a 500 volt cap, not a 450. But there's 450 right now. But you see that? That's really, really high. See that? It pegs it. If I go to the 6 milliamp scale, pegs the meter. Okay. Remember I had said the power factor seemed very high? Well, that's the reason the power factor was very high. This is a leaky capacitor, okay? Now, you see that little red dot there? Once that's, That indicates the 6 milliamps. So once, once the reading gets below that, they're trying to tell you that's, that's when it's safe to push the meter scale over. But we're currently at 480 volts, approximately. And at 480 volts... Now that's only one section. You gotta remember there's four sections in this cap. It's dissipating. Okay, I can finally push that over. Just about six milliamps. That's extremely high. You know, six milliamps may not be, seem like a lot, but you've got four sections. If you've got four sections each drawing six milliamps, and that's that's six milliamps is not like it's being used in another circuit. There is no other circuit. It's the tester and the capacitor. That's six milliamps of current is being burned up inside of this can cap right here. So that's what that means. It is a leaky cap. Okay. Now, some people will tell you you can reform these. And you can. I don't do that. 
I don't like reforming capacitors because for the simple reason, it's still an old cap. Any of the oil that's, you know, evaporated, a paper, it's, pa it's paper inside. It separates those two aluminum plates. It deteriorates. It gets acidic. You have all kinds of, you know, chemical reactions happening inside of this. You can only reverse that process so much, no matter how much you reform this. And you can see the current draw has dropped. And that's what, that's what people do when they're, they reform a capacitor. They're going to monitor this current. Okay, so you can see it's down to what? A little over four and a half milliamps. And if we were to sit here for hours and monitor this cap, or even days, we may be able to get it down to, you know, basically zero milliamps. But that's because of the capacitor starting to reform. Some of the aluminum being, is, is chemically changing inside. It will reform. But like I say, it's still an old cap. If you hook up a cap to one of these analyzers and you see it, you know, it stabilizes somewhere, you know, four, six, anything actually. When I, I want to see below like 0 0.0, probably six or eight milliamps. I mean, when I've got this switch pushed over, I want to see the needle way down here. Ideally, nothing. Uh, so like I say, this capacitor is definitely leaky. And what that would be is if, if all four of those sections happen to be leaky like that, the can, if you were to come back, or if you had an extremely accurate thermometer, I mean, I've got a laser, you know, infrared thermometer, but uh, if you could, you know, very, very accurately measure the temperature of this, you know, in a controlled lab conditions, you could test this capacitor and actually see the temperature rise. That's because it's burning up. All that current's being burned up inside this can cap. And if all the other three sections were, were hooked up, those would be producing, you know, be using even more current, and it would be, you know, dissipating more heat inside, which is why, like I had said, that's why they blow up. But, so, you know, there's actually a very good example of a leaky capacitor. This one has, you know, it's down at about three and, eh, a little over three and a half milliamps. And like I say, if we watch the monitor this over a few hours, um, usually you'll get down to about maybe the two milliamps. And then from then on, it will take hours for it to drop that last little bit. And that's, like I say, that's as the capacitor's reforming. You know, it's changing chemically inside. There's a, you know actual reaction happening in there with, with the electricity. But, uh, like I said, I want to do a video here to show some of these old analyzers, how they still have a, a, a place to, you know, in even modern day, um, with, you know, a lot of these fancy analyzers you have out there, there's still a place for old analyzers like this. Uh, you know, this one is built like a, basically a Sherman tank. Um, you know, it's, God, I have to set that on the scale. I mean, this thing's, <laughs> it's got a lot of weight to it. It's a good size transformer in there and a cabinet on this thing. Man, they definitely, you know, that's, look how thick that steel is. You know, they definitely don't make test equipment to the, these standards anymore. Um, and like I say, I don't know why, other than maybe because it's an oddball Semcor. You know, I know a lot of people have the Sprague Tello bikes, um, which I have a bunch of those too. But I have three of these. It's taken me years to find three of them, but I've got three of them. And they're all in about this good a condition. Um, one of them actually even has a NASA sticker right here. I've got a bunch of equipment, old tube equipment that uh, has come from NASA over the years. And when I restore them, I always leave those stickers on them. But uh, this is the best condition one, and this is the one I use the most. But uh, like I say, definitely still relevant today um, for testing capacitors. And like I say, you know, there was a perfect example of one that I just removed. And, you know, it would have worked fine in circuit. It was within its capacitance range. Uh, so, you know, it still stores stores electricity like it's supposed to. But it's getting, it's going to get hot, and it's that only gets worse. It doesn't get better, you know. So it's just a matter of time before kaboom. So there we go, the Semcor capacitor analyzer. And actually, I don't think I mentioned it. It's a model RC one fifteen. So if you'd ever want to keep an eye out for one of those, oh. I hope you got some uh, useful information out of this.